Our first question is from CD Champ 17. What are rest pause sets and how can they be used in a workout? Who's uh, who's big on rest pause sets recently? Those kind of came back. Someone was talking about it. Who? Um, I, Lane mm. Lane was just training him, training them with uh, Holly. I, I saw on his Instagram. Just to well, I mean, they've been around for a long time. But oh I, yeah, no, of course. I feel like somebody was making a deal about it that we interviewed recently. Uh, I can't remember. Ben Pollock uses them a lot. Uh, I don't know how shallow how often I see shallow use them, but oh, you know who it was? Uh, remember the dude we? Inter- oh, I can't remember his name. Shaved head, like overly jacked. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Mountain Dog. Was it Mountain Dog? Is it Mountain Dog or um, yeah, the other like? Well, scientists. People though. are talking about rest pause sets now more than I've heard in a long time. But they've been they've been around for a very very long time. Long time. Uh, yeah, bodybuilders have used rest pause sets since uh, gee since the 70s maybe or 80s. So essentially what they are is you, uh, rather than, so typically a, a normal workout set looks like this, right? You do you do your 10 reps, then you rest for one to three minutes, then you do another 10, you know, set of 10 reps and, and so on. What a rest pause set looks like is you do 10 reps, then you wait maybe 15, 20 seconds, then you do as many as you can again, then you wait another 15, 20 seconds, then you do as many as you can again, and then you're done. Something along those lines. It's like a cluster set. Kind of like a cluster set, exactly. Mm, yeah. Um, do they have value? Yeah. There, it's an it's an advanced intensity building technique. It's a way to uh, squeeze more volume and work um, and intensity um, into your workout in a shorter period of time. In a shorter period of time, it's not the be all end all. So it's not like you know do those and then that's it. You all, you just do those and you get all the results you ever wanted. But um, especially if you're advanced, and I say advanced because if you're not advanced, if you've been working out for less than two or three years consistently, um, then your best bet is to stick to the basics. Get good at the basics. Mm -hmm. Get good at your form. Get good at your traditional sets. Get good at your controlled negatives, the squeeze, the feel. Focus on that. That's where you're going to get the most results. But after you've been training for a while and you've been doing it consistently and you know what you're doing and your form is great and you've got great connection – then you can start to implement uh, different types of techniques. Mm-hmm. And what I would do with something like this is I would implement this in phases. Um, and I would do it for a phase of one to three weeks. So I'd say to myself, okay, for the next three weeks, I'm going to make sure my sleep is good, my nutrition's good. I've been working out for a while. Um, I'm going to use rest pause sets for uh, my chest or maybe just for an exercise. I'm going to do it just for squats. Um, and that's it, and take it from there. I, I like them for like uh, isolation exercises. Like I like it for arms. It's a cool thing to do. Some shoulder stuff. I like to do it with shoulders. Get a really good while. pump, huh? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great way to chase a pump. Um, you know, I, whenever we get questions that are like specific to uh, tools uh, like this in training, it just reminds me of like training uh, for a sport in any sport. Uh, every sport has like its its foundational movements or things that you should get really really good at. Uh, before you try something fancy, you know, and and I I relate to basketball the most because what I played the most, and I think of like how important the fundamentals of learning to dribble the basketball with your right hand, learning to dribble the basketball with your left hand, rocker step, jab step, jump stop, like you know, bounce pass. These are all like fundamental things that mm-hmm. you as when you're when you're learning to play the game. I don't know any of those backboard things. shots. <laughs> yeah, 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 you you use you John drill wooden style. You drill these home like crazy. And you know every every great player ever uh, has mastered those, and then as they've progressed and they've been doing it for years, they add, they add the between the legs crossover, the behind the back pass, the the dunk. Like these are all things that are also extremely valuable and uh, make you great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you don't you you don't need that necessarily at the beginning to get good at the game, right? You know what it reminds me. I was waiting for your uh, spoiler on a car analogy because that that would go perfect here. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. totally. Yeah. You know what it reminds me of. So in in uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu um, has become very very popular over the last uh, you know few decades. I mean, when it first uh, entered into the the fray, it was uh, the, the first Ultimate Fighting Championship. Right? Hoist Gracie comes out, skinny Brazilian dude. Doesn't look like he could beat up anybody, and he beats everybody, including Ken Shamrock, who looked like a cartoon character yeah, uh, at the jacked. time. Chokes him out, right? So everybody's like, "Oh my god, I got to learn this this new martial arts." Since then, it's changed uh, and, and and been modified so much. There's so many of these high tech 
uh, high, highly technical moves and spin moves and rolling off of your your back and you know things like the Barimbolo and uh, you know uh, 50 50 all these different positions and what's happened with a lot of jiu jitsu guys they go right into these these very technical moves mm -hmm. meanwhile the 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 real champions are saying you need to focus on the basics and a great example of that would be like uh, Hicks and Gracie's son his son competes in these tournaments against high level black belts who are doing all these flashy moves and literally will beat them with the most basic rudimentary jiu-jitsu, but so perfect. It's the mm -hmm. basics mm -hmm. that do most of everything. And it's true for any sport. It's true for any endeavor. It's true for business. It's true for being a good personal trainer. And it's true for your workouts. There's the fundamentals that will give you 95% of your results. Then there's all the other stuff that'll squeeze out that extra 5%. Yeah. If you're not good at the fundamentals, you're, it's almost wasting your time. Not only that, it's fun. You know, like that's the, the appeal of it is, wow, this is like new, it's exciting, it's it's like producing something, it's fun. But again, it's not part of like the meat and potatoes of what you need to focus on the you know for the rest of the workout. Well, you got to be careful. It can become very detrimental for people chasing all the flashy ideas because then you're you're chasing all these things that are cool that you heard about, that somebody used clickbait to get your attention of try this new thing, and you're doing all those things, and you're not getting the time under practicing the stuff that really, like you said, is the 95%. Mm -hmm. So it can really kill your gains by chasing all that. I think that's when we talk about uh, topics like this, I, we're, I think we're always trying to think about the the mm. average person. Like I'm, there's always a caveat. Yeah, I know. I know there's some asshole who's listening right now. Like, what would what, love to argue like how incredible it, it's been for that person, that single person who's been training for 15 years of their life, and how valuable it's been of a tool for them. Like that that's not who I think we're trying to communicate to. I think we're trying to communicate to the average person who struggles just to be consistent for two years in a row of training. I mean, that's that would be mm -hmm. a year in a row of training would be a fucking accomplishment in itself. So if you're that person and, you know, you haven't been squatting and deadlifting, overhead pressing and and really good at those movements uh, for a long time, then you're going to get so much more value in and spending more time uh, working towards that than trying all these right. different variables. Yeah, I would put I would put, uh, you know, rest pause sets up there with forced reps uh, force negatives or negative reps, partial drop, reps, drop sets, drop sets, you know, stuff like that. Um, and we put them in some of our programs. They tend to be a phase, um, and they tend to be later on in the program when somebody's already done six to eight weeks of, of training consistently in one of our programs, and we know it's done really well. So there's definitely value to rest pause sets. Um, but if you're not advanced or you don't have a lot of consistency under your belt, I would stay away from them. Now, if you are consistent. You've been training for a while. Now there's lots of value. Give it a shot. Try them out because you know your body. You know how you move. You already know the fundamentals. You've been doing them for a while. Now a technique like rest pause sets um, can provide you value. So it, now and again, uh, you know the second part of the question is how do I use this in a workout? Okay, here's one of the big mistakes you can make if you're advanced and rest pause sets work for you. You do them in all the whole workout. Now every exercise, every set, like I'm going to do rest pause sets throughout the whole workout. Way too much for most people. Pick one exercise or one body part, and that one body part, typically I wouldn't do rest pause sets for more than maybe two or three sets uh, in that entire workout because it is very, very intense. So it's not something you apply to the whole workout. It's something you throw in as an extra set to maybe three sets uh, for a particular body part or exercise. 